Hello everyone, welcome to Fundamentals of Shorthand and this is going to be our first video in this subject. So Fundamentals of Shorthand is one of the major subjects of um, BISOA or Bachelor of Science in Office Administration and I will be your instructor. I'm Crisabel Manzano and kapag ka magsasubmit kayo ng paper ninyo or ng mga um, requirements ninyo, ako lang po yung hahanapin ninyo or ibigay na lang ninyo dun sa registrar just in case na wala ako. Okay. So, uh, before we move on, please have with you Ala, I'm sorry. I'm Crisabel Mansano ba yung asan na po pala? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, just slash that out. Anyway, so first, before we move on, please have with you your modules. Ayan. So, nang sa ganon, may guide kayo sa magiging discussion natin in this um, a video. This is going to be a very exciting um, subject and I hope you will find it exciting as well. Uh, nasa introduction pa lang tayo. So, um, ayan. Let's move on. <laughs> so, in your first week, we have the evolution of stenography. So, ito yung magiging topic natin. Ano nga bang stenography? What is stenography? Uh, what is shorthand writing? Ano yung ginagamit na shorthand writing? Saan ito ginagamit? Para saan yung shorthand writing? So, yun yung mga pag-i-discuss natin in this video. Okay? So, first, what is shorthand writing? So, shorthand writing is an abbreviated symbolic writing method that increases speed and brevity of writing as compared to longhand. More common method of writing a language. More common method of writing a language. So, when you say writing a language, it means you're writing what is being dictated simultaneously na may nagsasalita and then sinusulat mo kung ano yung sinasabi nila. So, try doing that or try writing um, or taking down the complete na sinasabi or complete speech ng isang tao. So, um, a person can speak very fast depende, depende kung sa anong language, right? Ngayon, try mo, let's say, yung Tagalog. Sige, Tagalog or yung English. May nagsasalita. Itry mo nga na magsulat or isulat kung ano yung sinasabi nila. For example, um, this. Do you have your pens with you? Please have your pens with you. Now, what I want you to do is to get a pen and a paper and then as I am going to uh, read what is here, wag kayong mag ano ah, wag kayong mandaya ha. Let's just try this exercise. So for you to be able to see mamaya yung importance or yung use ng ng shorthand writing. So what I want you to do is get a ball pen or a pencil and a paper. And as I'm going to read this, you're going to write it down using yung yan, yung letters and whatever. Because kung sinil po rita, wano sina sina nga panagsurat, basta isulat ninyo. And what I want you to do is to picture it after. After kung magsalita, ha? Pag sinabi kong stop, then you stop. Wag, wag na ninyong dugtungan. Whatever was written there sa inyong papel, yun yung pipicturean ninyo and isesend ninyo sa akin. And I'm, rip, I'm, I'm saying it again, please be honest. Let's be honest. This is just a drill. Um, wala itong magiging bearing dun sa, hindi naman sa walang magiging bearing. So, everyone who's going to um, do this will uh, have a grade. Bibigyan ko ng, ng grade. This will be 10 points. Yung ipapagawa ko in this video will be 10 points. Kahit na ano man yung nasulat ninyo dyan, 10 points pa rin yan. So, there's no need for you to um, cheat. Okay? There's no need for you to, to cheat. Or there's no need for you to make it beautiful or whatsoever. Basta whatever you write there or whatever you're able to write there while I'm speaking, it's what you're going to picture and send in our GC. Or not GC, sa akin na lang. Sa ano na lang, PM nyo na lang. Okay? So, ayan. So, let's start. You have your pen and your paper. Let's start. An abbreviated symbolic writing method that increases speed and brevity of writing as compared to longhand. More common method of writing a language. Stop. Okay? Bobbins up. Whatever you have there, take a moment. Picture in ninyo. Okay? So, ayan. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to picture whatever there is and then send ninyo sa akin. Okay? 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's move on. So ayon yung shorthand. Ang sinasabi nilang shorthand, pag sinabi mong symbolic, wala kang makikitang letters doon. Walang letters doon. Wala kang makikitang A, B, C, D. Wala. When you say symbolic, um, usually ang ginagamit lang nila is straight line, curve line, circle, slanting line, ganon. Slipping line, standing line, mga ganon lang yung ginagamit nila usually. So, and then continuous yung pagsusulat. Hindi katulad ng longhand or hindi katulad ng yung pagsusulat natin ng ano na, di ba, maraming beses tayong tumitigil kasi nga lumilipat yung ball pen. Ngayon, when you say shorthand, it's a symbolic abbreviation. Sino shortcut lahat? Sino shortcut nila lahat? Hindi kumbaga, for example, let's say shorthand. When you say shorthand, yung shorthand na yan, hindi mo sinusulat letter by letter. Kaya nagiging mas mabilis ang pagsusulat kasi nga yun yung sinasabi nila, it's a symbolic symbols lang. And may mga tulad ng sinabi ko nga, shorthand, hindi mo sinusulat na S H O R T H A N D. Hindi mo iniisa-isa 'yan. May mga symbols ang mga words, ang mga group of letters, may mga symbols na na ka ka um uh, yeah, may mga symbols 'yan. So, kaya nagiging mas mabilis ang pagsusulat kasi, ayun nga, um, hindi mo lahat sinusulat yung nasa word. And, maiintindihan ninyo yan as we go on. So, next, what is long handwriting? So, long handwriting is the normal way of writing using letters. So, the way you write your name, yung, for example, me, my name is Crisabel, Lim, Mansano, Bayungasan. So, yung pagsulat ko noon, kung saan lahat ng tao na marunong magbasa na iintindihan, that is what you call the long handwriting. So, ano yung difference? Yung long handwriting is yung normal nga na writing. And then, yung short handwriting, yun yung symbolic. And that short handwriting is what we're going to learn how to do, how to write here in this subject. So, now let's move on. What is the evolution of stenography? Saan nga ba siya nang galing? Okay, so itong stenography, mahaba-haba yung naging um, history niya. Ang daming lumabas na as, the, um, as, as time goes by, since nung nagsimula ang stenography, ang daming lumabas na mga style. Maraming naging... Um, Uh, tawag dito, inventor ng short handwriting or ng stenography. Ang dami niyan. So, hindi na natin, ano, hindi na natin isa-isahin kasi, you know, hindi naman natin sila kailangan. Hindi naman hindi natin kailangan. But, we're going to concentrate more on Greg shorthand. So, hindi na tayo magda-dive in or mag, yeah, magda-dive in dun sa isa-isahin pa natin yung mga, mga inventors na yan. So, Nandiyan sa inyong module, it says there that in the late 1800s, shorthand is a tool for recording others' conversation, taking quick notes, writing personal thoughts. Some famous individuals were avid of shorthand users such as Charles Dickens, Samuel Pepys, and Isaac Newton. So they are also one of the users or um, gumagamit ng shorthand writing. So, during 900, Greg Shorthand was a skill that helped secretaries get hired for jobs. Office workers of the 1900s had to be able to type and take dictation in order to be hired for many positions. Speed and accuracy were requirements for secretarial work, so time tests were given during employment screening. Okay, so ito yung... Ito yung ano, ito yung eras ng mga secretaries. Kasi nga 'di ba dati wala pang wala pang um, wala pang computer, wala pang recorders. Hindi pa uso ang recorders dati, wala pa. So, uh, you have to learn how to kung secretary ka um, and walang cellphone dati. So, kapag ka secretary ka, uh, talagang isa sa mga magiging trabaho mo is yung paggawa ng letter na ididictate ng boss mo. Alangan naman na kapag ka ikaw yung secretary, sasabihin mo sa boss mo na, Sir, pakiulit man ang kung nga naawatan, hang kung nga na-take note, hang kung nga na-isurat. Uh, that is very unprofessional. So, 
what you need is to learn how to write faster. Nang sa ganun, hindi ka mapahiya sa boss mo. And the tool that you need or, or the tool that they use during those times, nung 1900s, is ito nga si Greg Shorthand. And itong Greg Shorthand na to, ito naman yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, as I have said, there are different types or different styles of shorthand writing. My Pitmans, ganyan, my marami. You can search online kung talagang interesado kayo on that. But as I have said, we're going to concentrate on Greg shorthand. So, um, shorthand writing in the modern times. So, Greg shorthand or itong shorthand writing na to is yung tinatawag, yung, yung gagamitin nga natin is yung Greg shorthand. Kaya dito lang siya concentrate. So, Greg shorthand is still being used today even though the antiquated days of secretaries taking dictations from bosses, then typing their letters on typewriters has most gone by the wayside. Students are using this technique to take notes, keep up with their coursework, business persons or using it to take notes in meetings and court stenographers use it to capture the live testimony in proceedings. Okay, so yun yung gamit ng Greg shorthand in this modern world, in this modern time. Uh, I have been to um, courts. Uh, I also tried doing um, court stenography. So, alam ko na dun, dun talaga na, na nagagamit ang shorthand writing. Eh. And ang ginagamit talaga dun is yung itong, itong tinatawag nga natin na Greg shorthand. Bakit kailangan sa, bakit kailangan yung shorthand writing sa court? Okay, ang nangyayari kasi sa court, um, sa court kasi, di ba, may mga, may mga testimonials or um, yeah, di ba, may pinapupunta sila dun sa pulpit or dun sa, uh, di ba, may pinapaupo sila dun. Tapos itong si, during a trial, si judge magtatanong, ganyan, tapos yung, yung test, yung yung tetestigo o yung nandun sa ano sa harap na nakaupo doon sasagot right and then mamaya magtatanong naman yung yung um, attorney tapos sasagutin ulit ng ng witness or nung magtet yung naka nandun na magte-testimony so yun yung process ng korte kung nakakapanood kayo sa TV or kung naka-attend na kayo ng courts and all of those lahat Every single word that is being said inside or during a trial is being written down by these stenographers. Bakit po? Number one na, na um, kumbaga, kagandahan ng stenography is um, para sa ano, confidentiality. Confidentiality of, um, of a file. Right? Kasi nga, hindi lahat nakakaintindi ng shorthand writing. Hindi lahat inaaral po ito. So, kung ang, kung ang mga IT merong um, tinatawag nilang codes, right? may mga programming codes na kung saan tayong mga regular people hindi natin maintindihan, Kung may mga medical transcription naman ang mga doctors and other medical uh, related courses na hindi rin natin maintindihan, ito naman yung edge natin as office administration student. May shorthand writing tayo. And this shorthand writing, hindi lahat din nakakaintindi kasi nga sabi ko, hindi lahat nakaka-inaaral ang shorthand writing. And ako nga eh, before 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 I uh, I um, learned yung shorthand writing na ito. Hindi ko naman alam na may shorthand writing eh, o di ba? So yun yung kagandahan ng shorthand writing kung bakit ginagamit siya during uh, trials. Kasi nga yun yung confidentiality ng ng file ng ng kung ano man yung pinag-usapan nila, nila don. Highly confidential yun. So by using uh, stenography in recording it in writing it down, kahit na ikalat mo yan, kahit na, do hindi ko naman sinasabing makalat sila, pero kahit na, just in case na, uh, na, na misplace mo, or just in case na, nabasa ng iba, hindi nila maiintindihan. So, yun yung isang um, reason kung bakit ginagamit pa rin ang shorthand writing sa mga courts. And another is that, um, 
kahit na may recorder kasi, di ba may recorder naman na ginagamit, hindi naman all of the time working and functioning well ang isang recorder. Hindi naman all of the time nare-record ng recorder ng malinaw kung ano man yung sinasabi sa korte. So that is why you really, or, or the court really needs stenographers to write write down yung mga kung ano man yung pinagsasabi din la doon. And why I'm sharing this to you is this is to show you that there is a career na hindi porket saan ko namang gagamitin yung shorthand shorthand na yan kasi sometimes that is why people uh, are not able to learn something kasi yun yung mindset nila eh. Saan ko namang gagamitin yung shorthand na yan? Apay usarak iti panagbiag ko rin. Tahamot nga hangkumot nga kasapulan rin. Apay pila nga kasapulak nga aralan, ad adalan diba? So sometimes yun na yung naging ba nagiging barrier para nang sa ganun maaral ninyo ng maigi, ng tama or ng yung naging close na yung utak eh, na hindi mo naman kailangan. So, yung brain mo nag-shutdown. So, kahit na anong gawin kong turo sa inyo, hindi ninyo maiintindihan. Kasi nga, ayun nga, sabi ninyo sa utak ninyo, saan ko naman gagamitin yung shorthand na yan eh. Eh, hindi ko naman kailangan, ano, hindi naman kailangan sa buhay ko. So, ayun, nag-shutdown na yung brain kahit na anong turo na ni teacher, hindi na maintindihan ni estudyante. Kasi nga, hindi daw kailangan. So, that is why I'm trying to share here na there is a career when you pursue or when you learn um, short handwriting. Ay, malaki ang sahod sa, ano, malaki ang sahod sa um, pagiging court stenographer. Akala ninyo, ang dali lang ng trabaho, magsusulat ka lang maghapon, hindi naman madali yun. But then, di ba, magsusulat ka nga lang, tapos magtratranscribe ka lang. Pag sinulat mo from shorthand, itratranscribe mo, itatype mo sa computer for filing din. So, ang dali lang ng trabaho, hindi mo kailangan ng labor na grabe na ano kailangan magpagod ng magpagod. Ang mapapagod lang talaga is yung kamay. Pero, that's the nature of work. There's no work that is not tiring, right? So, Ayan, that is why I'm sharing para nang sa ganun nga makita ninyo na may career dito. May pwede, may future ka neng. May future ka kapag ka natutunan mo ng maigi ang shorthand writing. So, ayan, pero hindi ko naman sinasabi na aralin lang ninyo yung shorthand writing, wag na yung accounting ha, hindi naman ganun. So, uh, lahat ng mga ito, lahat ng mga subjects na naka-incorporate naka sa inyong course, lahat yan importante. So, whatever na na um, na profession ng gusto ninyong i-pursue, magagamit at magagamit pa rin ninyo ang mga yan. So, um, pagtuunan ninyo ng pansin, pagtuunan ninyo ng oras, ang lahat ng inyong mga subjects. Okay? Kahit na, um, syempre, hindi mo naman may iwasan na mahirap yan. Talagang mahirap, kaya ka nga natututo, ba? Diba? Kasi nga, nahihirapan ka, kaya ka natututo. Alam nga namang ituturo pa sa inyo yung mga bagay na alam nin na ninyo, ba? Diba? So, what you need to do is, approach your instructors. Kung hindi, may mga hindi kayo naintindihan, Mababait kami, joke. Pero totoo, kapag kami mga hindi kayo naintindihan, okay, pag may mga hindi kayo naintindihan sa mga subjects ninyo, sinasabi ko na to ng advance kasi nga medyo mahirap din ang ating subject kapag ka hindi ninyo pinaglaanan ng panahon na aralin, mahirap yan. Pero kapag ka talagang interesado kayo, Uh, the interest is there, then hindi kayo mahihirapan masyado. And yun nga, nakaagapi kami paragi. All the instructors here are always available every time na kailangan ninyo ng guidance. Okay? So, let's move on. Ang haba-haba na ng aking uh, ano, natahak joke. Next, Greg Shorthand, the inventor. Um, the inventor of Greg Shorthand is John Robert Greg. So, John Robert Greg was born in Ireland in 1867 to a Scottish family. During childhood, Greg suffered a hearing loss during an altercation with a classmate and teachers, which led outsiders to perceive him as slow-witted. Ano yung slow-witted? Dumbbell. <laughs> Nagtangkon. This was certainly not the case as he was quite brilliant and didn't let his deafness slow his process. He became an inventor, publisher, educator, and humanitarian, and, and eventually came up with the speed writing technique of Greg Shorthand in 1888. Originally called his system, I think this is system light line phonography, and introduced it to England. By 1893, he published his book, Greg Shorthand, and this form of rapid speed writing or Rapid writing spread to the United States and then to other nations. Over time, it was translated into use in Polish, Tagalog, Italian, Hebrew, Spanish, 
French and Chinese. Okay? So, di ba naging very successful siya kahit na isa siyang deaf tulong or hindi naman siguro siya totally na tulong pero ayun nga nakaka um, hindi siya masyadong nakakarinig so it was never uh, hindrance dun sa success niya yung yung hearing loss niya and ayan nga um, yung inventor natin ng Greg shorthand is John Robert Greg and ito yung gagamitin natin yung yung technique niya sa pagsusulat ang gagamitin natin dito sa ating mga succeeding lessons Okay? So, ayan, this is a sample of shorthand writing. Nakikita ninyo, as, is this your first time to see such strokes? So, ang tawag natin dyan sa mga sulat na yan is a stroke. Okay po? Stroke po ang tawag sa mga yan. Um, hindi writing. Ang tawag strokes. So, uh, ganyan, uh, ganyan ang magiging sulat ninyo after, ano, after nating after ninyo ng course or ng subject na shorthand writing. <laughs> Exciting, right? This is a new um, skill. Shorthand writing is a skill. And uh, it's a new one. It's a new one. Siyempre, ngayon nyo lang makikita eh. Kaya, new one. Ngayon nyo lang matututunan. So, um, ayan. I am hoping that you feel excited na matutunan. This is, ganun dapat kasi yung insight ninyo or ganun dapat kasi yung maging reaction ninyo when you are going to see new things, when you are about to learn new things, you have to be excited. You have to be interested enough na maglaan ng time para aralin ang isang bagay. Okay? Kasi lahat ng, sinasabi ko nga, lahat ng mga yan, magagamit din ninyo in the future. Alam ba ninyo kung baka mamaya kayo na yung maging future stenographer ng, ano, ng, ng regional trial court, di ba? Or baka mamaya kayo na yung maging, um, tawag dito, bookkeeper ni, ni Wang Dali, dun sa, Madam Wang Dali, dun sa kanyang bank, right? So, you do not know what the future brings. So, whatever knowledge that is available for you to absorb right now as a student, absorb ninyo lahat. Kaya nyo yan. All you have to do is, of course, uh, ayan, pagtuunan ninyo ng pansin, bigyan ninyo ng oras, and, um, uh, and ask help. Kung may mga hindi kayo naiintindihan, ask help. Huwag yung, wag yung give up agad na dahil nga sa hindi ninyo naiintindihan, eh wag na tama na. No. We are always available to 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 help you. Uh, as long as, syempre, i-approach nyo kami kasi hindi naman namin alam kung sino yung kung sino sa inyo yung medyo hindi na may mga hindi masyado naiintindihan. Ganyan. So, you really have to approach us. We are very approachable. Haha. <laughs> joke. Anyway, totoo naman yon. Though it's joke, pero pero totoo yun, right? So, now, let's move on to your, um, let's move on to your activities. So, sabi dyan, write a 300-word essay on the topic below. So, yung topic natin is stenography in today's computer age. So, what you're going to do is write an essay. Nandyan naman. <laughs> Not three, at least, at least 300 words. Kung kaya ninyong magsulat ng mas marami, di very good. So, stenography in today's computer age. Ano yung gamit ng, ng, ng stenography ngayong may computer na? Nagagamit pa rin ba or hindi na? So, that's it everyone. Thank you for um, watching. Thank you for tuning in and listening. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. See you in, your, see you in our next video. God day, good day and God bless. Ano ba yan? <laughs> Bye!